Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the photo department. It's been a minute since I've been here talking to the camera. As you guys know, I went on a trip with my girlfriend to Milwaukee. I made a video about it with lots of photos. Um, lots of footage of the trip. I'll leave the link right up here. If you haven't seen it yet, please go check it out. Uh, It was a lot of work to make and it was really, really fun. I'm really proud of how it turned out. And it's a new, different kind of format. It's more documentary style. So um, something I've been wanting to try for a long time. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear what you think. I'm hoping to do more stuff like that in the future, uh, depending on you know, how you guys feel about it. Maybe I'll incorporate it more into this channel. I'm definitely gonna be doing more of that format for my personal work. I am drinking coffee. It's a little bit later in the day, but uh, it's a beautiful, warm, sunny day here in Los Angeles. So while I am drinking coffee, it is an iced coffee. And I don't mean cold brew, I mean iced. This is a coffee from Maru. It's the Columbia L. Obraje. Sorry about the pronunciation, but it is a Colombian coffee that I got from Maru and it's really good. But since it's so warm today, I thought it'd be a good idea to do an iced coffee. So I did James Hoffman's method for a pour over into ice and it worked out really well. And you'll notice I'm not drinking out of a Heath mug today. This mug was made special for me by my friend Hannah, who lives in Northern California. She is a small batch ceramicist. And I really love, I love this mug. It's so cool. The texture is really nice. Um, It's beautifully made. Yeah, and she was so kind to send this to me. So thank you, Hannah. You guys should go check out her work if you're into ceramics. Her Instagram is hannahodge.projects. And I'll throw the link in the description so you guys can go check out her work. So shout out, Hannah. I love this mug. It's, It's made my coffee taste so much better. You'll also notice the bike behind me. Does anyone care about bike stuff? Probably not. I've been riding a bike. It's my dad's. He gave it to me. It was his bike when I was a kid. So I saw that bike a lot around when I was a kid, but, um, it's been in a garage for like 15 or 20 years. So I took it off his hands, got it fixed up, got new parts put on it. And that's what I've been, so I've been getting around with, which has been great. My thighs are burning, but, uh, it's a good burn. I guess I've been told. Let's talk about why we're really here. The Olympus XA, which is a beautiful camera. You might have seen the unboxing link up here when I first got this camera. And if you did, then you know that I had one of these before and then recently repurchased it. This is another one of those cameras where I had it and I didn't really need it. um, So then I sold it and then I regretted it. This camera is just really cool for a couple different reasons. And um, let's talk about it. Firstly, it's tiny. This is just a very, very small camera. They're able to get this camera incredibly small because Olympus basically re-engineered this lens to make it work in this size of a body. It's like reversed or something. I can't remember exactly why. I should have researched it before making this video, but that's not what we do here. We fly by the seat of our pants. But this lens, it's a 35 millimeter 2.8, which is pretty crazy for this size, apparently. When they made this lens, it was a technological marvel. One of the things I will say about this camera that's frustrating is often I will find that the images are soft or don't seem to be super sharp in focus, especially when I'm closer to the 2.8 or F4 range on the aperture. In those times, I'll find myself being annoyed with this camera and wanting to, you know, wishing I had like my Nikon F2 or another 35 millimeter camera with me because the shot that I got was not necessarily as detailed as I was hoping for. But the reason why that no longer bothers me is because this camera serves me in a very specific way. This is kind of like um, if you see people who carry around a notebook all the time in their pocket, this is like my little sketchbook that I use to take notes throughout the day. And what I mean by that is this comes with me everywhere I go. I don't leave this house without this camera in my pocket or in my shoulder bag or my crossbody or whatever I happen to be with um, that day. This camera is always with me. And the purpose that it serves is if I'm out and about and I see something that I want to photograph, I take a little snapshot with this guy, come back later, 
And then I look at the roll of film that I developed from this camera and I see all these things that I photographed and I decide later, do I want to revisit this scene? Do I want to use this location that I took a photograph of in another project? Do the colors in this scene that I took a photo of, does this really kind of jive with something else I had in mind for later use? And this, <laughs> that functionality makes this camera so useful. I know a lot of people use their phone cameras in the same way where if they see something cool and they want to come back to it later, you know, take a quick snap with your phone and you don't even have to wait to develop it. It's right there in your camera roll. But with this camera, there's more intentionality. It seems like um, I have done that before with my camera and my phone where I see something I want to take a photo of. I snap it, go on with my day. I never come back to it. I have photos in my camera's photo stream or whatever camera roll. Uh, and then, you know, every once in a while I'll look at my camera roll and it's just like, geez, I have 1200 photos in here. I'm not going to really go through all of them. I'm not even going to remember what the pictures I took of were and why I took them. So it's just too easy to kind of do something with that camera in my phone and then totally forget about it. Uh, where with this, every time I come to the end of a roll, it goes on my desk and then I process that roll either that day or the next day or whenever I'm processing film next, which is really often. So I'm kind of forced to reckon with the photos I took on this camera. This camera has the ability to shoot at uh, f2.8, which I think is really cool. And it does have manual aperture settings. You can choose whatever aperture you want to shoot at. But the majority of the time I'm shooting at f8 or f11 because in that role of being kind of a sketchbook, I'm trying to capture as much detail as possible. When I go back and kind of do like a postmortem, I guess on that picture, not a postmortem, what would I call that? When I go back to like, just look at what I photographed, I want to see everything that was going on. I do use this to take snapshots, you know, photos that I'm going to use later. Uh, I met up with my friend Luke and his wife recently to grab coffee when they were down in LA visiting. And I took a couple snapshots of them because they are cuties and I wanted to remember this day and uh, it serves that purpose really well. They're great snapshots. They look cool. One of the things that kind of <laughs> rubs me the wrong way about this camera is how glorified it's become in the last couple years. It is a really cool camera with a really cool feature set, but the price has been skyrocketing. The first one that I bought, um, I believe it was in 2016. I think I paid a hundred dollars for it or less. It was around $100. I paid $180 for this one. Um, I didn't hesitate to pay $180 for this one because I know that the prices are going up on these. And that was kind of the one opportunity I had to get um, one in working, good, mechanically sound condition uh, for a decent price. Um, I don't anticipate myself reselling this. I'm not looking to make money off of it. But also, I can't imagine not having it with me. I have an Olympus Infinity Stylus that used to be my mom's that was the camera that kind of came with me with everything. But the problem with that camera is it's really nostalgic. That camera was purchased for my mom when I was a kid. Um, my grandfather bought one for my mom and both my aunts. And so they all had their own you know, copy of that camera. And there's a large body of I'm not going to say work, I guess it's just like a ton of photographs from my childhood that were taken on that specific camera. So I'm a little nostalgic for it. It works totally fine, but I really worry about the day that I drop it on concrete and crack it or spill water on it or break it in some way. It's not some like family heirloom, but the fact that like it was passed down to me and you know, I just don't want to lose it or break it. So this is kind of like the stand in for that, but it's also a little bit better. It's much smaller. It came with the, I have the flash for it, which is really cool. This is the A11 flash. That is the kind of companion to this camera. There's also an A16 that's a little bit more powerful, but this is the one that came with, with my camera, which is another reason why the 180, you know, price was justified because it came as a full kit with the actual box it came in. Um, and even, you know, even with the, the flash attached, it's very, it's very small. I can still fit this in my pocket. It's just a little bit longer. This flash is also not perfect by any means, but it is very usable for snapshots and just getting an idea down. And I think for me, one of the reasons why I really love this camera is I do need a little bit extra motivation to get work going. 
um, I often have a lot of doubt when it comes to my work and, and putting it out there or projects I have that I get excited about initially. And then the excitement kind of tapers off because I think no one's going to care about this or it's not as cool as like this person or my ideas aren't as good or whatever. But if I have this with me and I can kind of like immediately act on that impulse, if I see something I like, I can take a picture of it and then look at it later. Then, you know, seeing it on film, seeing an actual photograph of it kind of gives me like, okay, there's no excuse. You can do this. Like this idea will pan out if you do it. And I like that. I like that. I have this kind of like, I no longer have like a real excuse to be like, "Ah, I'm not going to try that idea. Why not? Just do it. You have a camera in your pocket. Just try it. And for that, I am eternally grateful to this little camera. So that is how I use my Olympus XA. That is the niche, the role that it, um, kind of sits in. And, um, I'm really happy with that. So, uh, yeah, this is the only point and shoot camera I'm currently using too. Um, I know people really like their contacts T2s and stuff like that, but, uh, this is, this is the most I'm going to spend on a, on a point and shoot. I think at this point, do you guys have a similar camera that you do the same thing with, or do you have a different camera? Um, do you guys have the XA and use it the same way I do? Do you have a different camera and use it the same way I do? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to talk to you guys about it. I'd love to see some of the work you do. Um, I have a project coming up that I'm using this camera for that I'm really excited to share with you guys at some point. I'm kind of in the middle of it. So when that's ready, I'll announce it, I'm sure. I'm really interested to see what you guys are doing if you're doing something similar to I am with your Olympus XA or another point and shoot. So drop me a comment. Let me know what you're doing. I'd love to see it. Make sure you go check out the my last video, the documentary about my road trip. I leave the link in the description. I want to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes uh, for creative people just like me and you. I've used Skillshare before to learn more about editing video in Premiere Pro, and there is so much in the way of resources for stuff just like that. Recently, I've really wanted to up my color grading game, and I've been super enjoying this class by Dan Dan Liu, who has an amazing class that helps you hone your skills so you can get the most out of color in your videos. There is so much more available in Skillshare for practically anyone. And for less than $10 a month for an annual plan, you get premium access to all of it. If you want to check it out, you can go to the link in my description. For the first 1,000 people who sign up, you can try out Skillshare Premium for free. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video.